Good morning, class. We begin with the lesson Making a Living Rural Livelihoods and Urban Livelihoods. Now, in the last class, we studied there are various ways in which a human resource could be used. That means any human possible power which can be put to work in cooperation is called resource. Now, if you are living in a rural area, that means in a village, you will be taking up a work, maybe agriculture, maybe pottery, weaving, carpentry, etc. These are small jobs taken up by these rural people, these villagers, is called rural livelihood. Now, we learned about different types of farmers, which have been broadly classified according to the economic status. That means the money and the amount of farm they have, the land they have. And in that, we learned about large farmers who have more than five hectares of land. And most of their work is done either by the landless farmers or they uh, employ the small farmers and give them the cash or at times some kind of money or some other things instead of money. Then there are middle-sized farmers, those farmers who have two to five hectares of land they work mainly in their own fields. They grow crops for their own needs to be fulfilled, for their own subsistence. Subsistence means to have their own requirements being fulfilled. These are middle-sized farmers. Then small-sized farmers, they have just a very small piece of land and they somehow manage to live up to their needs. They lead a difficult life. They do not have big machines to look after. They only depend on manpower, their own power. And they, uh, due to the miserable conditions, a few of them leave their villages also and shift to nearby towns, etc. Then now we talk of the other type, the shopkeepers. Now in villages, next to the farmers, shopkeepers also play a part in fulfilling the needs of the villagers. Whatever basic requirements they have are fulfilled by the small shopkeepers. Maybe they are selling grocery, stationery, hosiery, medicines, etc., food items. All this is many a times taken in cash or at times on credit. Then we talk of the blacksmiths. From here we begin. The occupation of a blacksmith is also very important in rural areas. Generally, there is one family of a blacksmith in each village. He makes tools and implements of iron for the farming community. He also repairs the tools and implements in return for cash or in kind payments. Members of his family help him in his work. An assistant keeps the fire burning by working on the bellows. He strikes the iron when it is hot and molds the iron in desired shapes. So as the word blacksmith tells you, dealing with the Iron equipments and iron tools, not just tools and mm, equipment, many a times utensils also are even sold and manufactured and mended by these small blacksmiths who is, reside in the village and work for the village people. Then we talk of the carpenters. Now that means a woodwork. And implements are the needs of the villagers, wooden items and implements are also important. These items and implements are made by a by a character. A carpenter who does all the woodwork in the village. Then we talk of a tailor. A tailor also plays an important role in the life of villagers. He sews clothes such as kacha, kacha, banyan, trousers, blouse, petticoats, kurta, etc. for the villagers at low rates. The members of his family also help him in his work. So again, the basic needs are fulfilled by the tailor and the variety of clothes he sews, you can always see them.
then other occupations of the village community are usually the villagers villages are of three types such as large villages middle sized villages and small sized villages and as the words tell you they are according to the size of the population residing in a village okay so some large village villages have schools and dispensaries which provide employment to the teachers doctors nurses etc that means they have all the small though in a small number but they have the basic needs of a particular village that means the hospital is needed teachers are needed doctors are needed so all that is provided then the potters make different types of earthen wares for the villagers the cobblers make the make and mend shoes the barbers do the hair cutting job the washerman washes clothes while weavers weave cloths such as bed sheet carpets etc for village community the postman delivers letters while the chaukidar keeps a watch on the village during the night so in one word they have also categorized various other people who look after the working in a village such as the potters the weavers the carpenters the washermen the barbers etc so these are the various people who are employed in rural livelihood now we talk of urban livelihoods an occupation is a trade or a job that is followed to earn money okay the economic activities of people may be divided into three groups primary activities secondary activities and tertiary activities now in the village you know that they basically they are agriculture and then there are some small jobs then in urban that means in city you have seen people you have seen your own parents taking up to secondary and tertiary activities now primary are the agriculture activities lumbering fishing grazing of animals etc then secondary activities they include the the primary products which are produced they are refined and utilized okay tertiary activities are like business teaching all these educational health transport trade commerce all this comes under the tertiary activity we will read about them in detail in our next class for now i would like you all to sit down and reread the chapter and see if you have understood till the rural agriculture and the various livelihoods that they take up